So here we are given that a hot air balloon is rising straight upward with a constant speed of 6.5 meter per second. Now at this position, a sandbag falls which was attached to the hot air balloon. Now we have to calculate, in the A part we have to calculate how much time is elapsed before the bag hits to the ground. And in the B part we have to find the greatest height achieved by the bag that is this height and I'm sure after watching this video you'll be able to give the answer comfortably welcome to stem professionals in this video we'll discuss two topics the first one summary of equations of motion and free fall and the next one would be the symmetry of free fall so let's start with the video Now in the last few videos we discussed about equations of motion and free fall and I have written all the equations that I have derived. These are the five equations, first one, second one, third one, fourth one and finally the fifth one. And free fall, we have discussed earlier also that free fall is the motion with constant downward acceleration of magnitude 9.81 meter per second squared. Now in this video we will discuss the real world problem based on these concepts. So let's discuss the first problem. Now here we are given that uh, drops of water detach from the tip of an icicle and fall from rest. Now when one drop falls the other drop has already covered a distance d. Now we have to tell as these two drops continue to fall does this separation distance increases decreases or stay the same. Now you may think that since the drop of water is in free fall so the separation distance between uh, drops will remain same but that's not true. Let me explain. Now suppose at time t equals to 0 this drop is uh, detached from the icicle. Now at time t equals to 1 one second this drop is detached now in one second this drop have already gained a velocity of 9.8 meter per second and this drop is at rest only because it is on the verge of uh, gaining the velocity thus the drop that has fallen earlier this drop will always have a greater velocity than the one that comes next Therefore, this drop will cover a greater distance as compared to this one for any time period. Hence, we can say that the separation distance will increase. So, A option is correct. Now, next we'll move to the uh, second question. So, here we are given that a volcano shoots out blobs of molten lava and this person is a geologist who wants to calculate the initial speed V0 of a particular lava bomb. So he uses a stopwatch to note the time of flight and he noted that the time of flight for lava bomb to rise up and back to its initial height is 4.75 seconds. This is the time he noted by using the stopwatch. And we have to calculate basically this geologist want to calculate the initial speed v0. Now to calculate the initial speed we can use the equation of motion and before that let me first explain the this coordinate system we have taken this as uh, this direction the upward direction to be the positive direction so the acceleration in this case would be negative g because this direction is positive and acceleration acts downward so this would be negative g for this case now we can use the equations of motion which is x equals to x naught plus v naught t plus 1 over 2 a t square this is the equation of motion that we derived earlier. Now since the initial, this is the initial position of the lava bomb and this is x0 which is equals to 0. So this term goes to 0. So we can write that uh, x is equals to v0 t plus 1 over 2. Now acceleration in this case is negative g. So we can write negative here and g here t square like this. Now so x is the final position. Now final position is also at the origin. So this would also be 0. So we can equate it to 0 like this. Now we can do one thing. We can take t common from here. So let him write it here. This is v0 plus 1 sorry minus 1 over gt and multiplied with t. We have just taken this t common 
and this is equals to zero. Now from here we can write either t is equals to zero or we can write that v naught minus one over two g t is equals to zero. Now from this equation we can write that v naught is equals to one over two times g times t. Now we can put the values. Time we have this much and g we have nine point eight one. So this would be equals to one over two acceleration due to gravity g is 9.81 meter per second squared multiplied with time is 4.75 second so from here the initial velocity comes out to be as uh, nearly 23.3 meter per second so this will be the initial velocity this initial velocity v naught from this example uh, we can conclude that a geologist can determine the initial speed of lava bomb this v naught by simply observing the flight time and by knowing the initial velocity he can tell how severe the volcanic eruption is now one question for all of you what is the speed of a lava bomb v when it returns to the same level from where it was launched that is let me show it in the figure that means at this position when it comes back to the original position then what would be the speed now pause the video and try to figure out now i hope you tried now uh, velocity we know that v is equals to v naught plus at now acceleration in this case would be negative g so we can put it here this is v naught minus gt now v naught we have a one over two g t so we can put it here v naught as one over two g t so that would be equals to negative one over two g t now this is what this is v naught so we can put it here this is v naught here negative of v naught therefore we can say that uh, the velocity v when it come back to its uh, its initial position this would be negative of v naught so when the lava bomb lands it has the same speed but it is traveling in the opposite direction this is very important now uh, let's study the symmetry of free fall and for that consider this ball which is thrown in the upward direction with some initial velocity say v naught and we can take its value to be uh, 29.4 meter per second so this ball is thrown in the upward direction and then it come back to its original position now our aim is to plot the xt vt and at graph now if you see this case is similar to the equation that we have studied just now so we can use equations of motion here to plot xt graph the first equation that we can use is x is equals to x naught plus v naught t plus 1 over 2 at square now let me define the coordinate system also so this direction we are taking to be positive x direction so acceleration would be negative g in this case because the body is in free fall and we have taken this to be our positive x axis so this would be x is equal to now x naught is the initial position and here this is origin so initial position would be zero so this would be zero here so v naught t minus one over two g t square now let's let's find the time for the ball to rise and fall back to its initial position now since this question is similar to the question uh, that we studied just now this one here we have uh, obtained that uh, velocity v naught is 1 over 2 gt so we can write that v naught is 1 over 2 gt and from here we can write that t would be equals to 2 times v naught divided by g so this is the time that uh, the ball take to move up and down to the initial position let's put the values 2 times v naught we have 29.4 g we have 9.81 so from here this time t comes out to be as 6 second so in 6 second the move the ball move up and down now let's find out the time at which the velocity becomes zero so for that we can use this equation v equals to v naught uh, plus at and in this case a we have minus g so we can put it as minus gt now v naught this velocity should become zero so we can put v as zero here in this equation 
so we'll get 0 is equals to v naught minus gt or we can write that t is equals to v naught by g so this is exactly the half time required for the ball to make the round trip like if you put the values v naught we have uh, 29.4 divided by 9.81 so this would be equals to 3 second so exactly half time and at this instant the velocity of the ball will be zero now we can easily plot the xt graph so this is the xt graph and at time t equals to zero the position of the particle is at origin and at time equals to six second we obtain that at six second uh, the velocity uh, the position of the particle is again at the origin because at this time it come back to its initial position now at time t equals to 3 second the velocity becomes 0 so that means that at this time the uh, the position of the ball would be at the topmost point so this is 3 second so we can make a dotted line here so here this is the position or you can do one thing you can put the values here time t as 3 second v naught as 29.4 meter per second we can we'll get this coordinate to be here this x would be something around above 40 so these are the three points we can join with a smooth curve because this is x is a function of t square so it cannot be a straight line it will be a smooth curve so something like that this is the maximum maximum position and then back to its original position like this now at this position the velocity is zero and at this position the velocity would be negative of the initial velocity and here the initial velocity is v naught now this figure is symmetric that means if if you want to find the velocity at this point suppose at this point suppose this is v1 so if you see the corresponding point this one this velocity would also be the v1 but with a negative sign so this is the xt graph now next we can plot the vt graph so this is the vt graph now uh, we know that as soon as the ball is thrown in the upward direction the ball is in free fall and ball begins to accelerate downward so the velocity will decrease with time so the graph would be something like that and this is at time t equals to 3 and at this position the velocity should become 0 so the line should pass through this point so this would be something like that now velocity is decreasing doesn't mean that the ball is moving in the downward direction like here you can see for the first three seconds the ball is moving in the upward direction it is moving in the upward direction but the direction the velocity is decreasing with time why because the acceleration is acting in the downward direction so this is the vt graph now we can draw the at graph now since the acceleration is constant throughout the motion which is a equals to minus g which is equals to negative 9.81 meter per second squared so it will be a straight horizontal line like this so this would be the at graph for the motion now let's get back to the question that I discussed in the starting of the video and this was the question now uh, when the sandbag is separated from the basket its velocity was that is the initial velocity it was 6.5 meter per second and the position is 20 meter from the origin so we have taken this as our positive x direction so x naught we have 20 now in the a part we have to calculate that how much time elapses before the bag of sand hits the ground that means at what time the bag would hit to the ground and this is the xt graph for the sand bag so pretty simple we can use the equation of motion which is x is equals to x naught plus v naught t plus half a t square now since we have taken this as our positive uh, direction so acceleration would be minus g so we can put it here x naught plus v naught t minus 1 over 2 g is uh, sorry a is minus g so we have taken this minus here g 
t square. Now we have to calculate the time at which the sandbag reaches to the ground. So the final position would become zero at the ground. So this would be zero here. So other values we have zero is equals to x naught we have 20. So we can put it here 20 meter. V naught we have 6.5 meter per second. Time is t minus one over two. Now g is 9.81 meter per second squared multiplied with t square let me make it a little bit small so get some space to write t square now that would be equals to now this is 20 plus this would be 6.5 t minus this would become 4.905 t square and this is equals to zero now this is a quadratic equation we can solve this quadratic equation by using our calculator and we'll get the time t to be equals to 2.78 second and another value will get minus 1.46 second now since time cannot be negative so this value is neglected so the correct answer would be 2.78 second so the time at which the sandbag reaches to the ground is 2.78 second this is the answer for the a part now in the B part, we have to find what is the greatest height of the bag of sand during its fall to the ground. So what they're asking, they're asking this maximum height, this one, let it be X max. Now we know that at this point, the velocity becomes zero. Now, uh, let's first find the time at which the velocity becomes zero. So we can use this equation V is equals to V naught plus 80. And for this case, A is minus G. So we can put it as minus gt. Now velocity becomes zero. So we can put this value to be equals to zero. Or we can write that t is equals to v naught over g. This equation we had de derived earlier also. Now let's put the values. v naught we have 6.5 and g is 9.81. This is meter per second and this is in meter per second squared. So that would be equals to 0 0.66 second. So at this time, this time is 0 0.66 second. The velocity becomes zero. Now we can easily calculate the maximum this thing height. So maximum height x max would be equals to x naught plus v naught t plus one over two a t square and acceleration we have minus g so this minus i'm writing it here and a as g and this is t square now the time at which the velocity becomes zero this is the point and time we have 0 0.66 second so we have to put this value t here and x naught we have 20 because the initial position we have 20 v naught we have 6.5 meter per second and time we have 0 0.66 seconds minus 1 over 2 9.81 meter per second squared multiplied with t squared is 0 0.66 second and it's squared now we can use our calculator to solve this and we'll get this value to be nearly 22 meter so the maximum height achieved by the uh, sandbag will be 22 meter so this is the answer for the b part now what are the observations from this uh, question here we see that uh, at time t equals to 0 0.66 second the velocity becomes zero that means for this time interval the velocity is positive that is uh, we can say that the bag of sand continues to move upward for 0 0.66 second after it is separated from the basket and reaching to a maximum height of 22 meter above the ground and then it begins to move downward and hits the ground uh, 2.78 seconds after detaching from the basket so this was the ob observation and this is all with this video and in the next video we'll be reviewing uh, the total topics that we have studied in chapter 2